When you play Rocket League, do your camera settings look like this? Well, let's hope not, because this is Buzz. And Buzz is an all-star bot made by Psyonix. And no matter how well these all-star bots play, they'll never get out of silver. Except for you, Tex. You got this. Now, I know this video has been covered before, but it's still a question I get asked all the time. What are good cam settings? So I have hosted hundreds of tournaments from bronze all the way to pro players. So trust me, the entire Twitch chat can tell when you're a low ranked player just based on your camera settings. Yeah, it's that noticeable. But virtually every top 100 player I have seen has very similar camera settings. So basically what I'm saying is if you ever wanna be a top 100 player, pay attention to this guide. Before I show you guys the settings, if you haven't already, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, turn on notifications. At the time of recording, I'm almost at 3K subscribers and I really appreciate you guys. This page should look familiar to you. This is the camera settings tab. It is your friend and not to be changed lightly. And most of these shouldn't change as you rank up. Basically, once you set this to a good place, it should carry you up the ranks without much change. So let's make sure you understand what all these camera settings do. Starting from the top, we have camera shake. Please just do me a favor and just, just uncheck that box. Just, it's no bad. I could go on and on about how camera shake is bad, but I'm just going to ask you to trust me on this. Basically, anytime you do anything, it shakes your car. Jump, flip, bump, anything. The camera shakes and makes the game unplayable. Seriously, there's a reason nobody plays with camera shake. And do not believe anyone in the comments about them playing with camera shake. They're trolling you. Now, a lot of the rest of these settings are not up for debate. Stay within the range I'm about to tell you. I promise these cam settings are used by the best in the world for a reason. And don't worry, you'll have your chance to be creative. So starting off, we've got field of view. And this feels sort of like changing a lens on a camera. If you have a high field of view, it's like having a really wide camera lens. Almost feels like a GoPro where you can see a lot, but it stretches the image around the edges and makes things feel further away. A low field of view feels like a long lens where everything is zoomed in and looks a lot bigger than it naturally is. And for a game like Rocket League, it doesn't make sense to zoom unnecessarily close to the ball. And the max of 110 doesn't distort the image that much. So most high level players use a field of view of 110, but some go all the way down to 105. The next setting we have is distance. Distance controls how close the camera is to your car and is one of the settings that I see most abused by new players. A high distance allows you to see more of the field and what is going on, but it makes it infinitely more difficult to get an accurate hit on the ball. Move the camera too close and you lose too much of the action going on around the car. And even worse, when the ball moves in ball cam, you can lose seeing your car completely. Most pros seem to use a distance somewhere between 240 and 300. So it's actually a pretty small margin that you can use, but stick with it. Up next, we have height. This controls how high the camera is in relation to your car. And this is another setting that I see really butchered by the lower ranks. People will crank it up to like a crazy height with a crazy distance, and it just doesn't make sense. Stick with what the pros use. They usually fall somewhere between 90 and 110. A height of 40 will put the camera so low that you can't see anything but the bumper of your car, which is going to make dribbling almost impossible. Not to mention, it's just, it's just, just don't do this. This is a bad height. <laughs> you can't see the front of your car at all. <laughs> But if you go with too extreme of a height, you're going to be able to see more of the game, but your accuracy is going to take a big hit. Your camera should make you feel like you're hovering just behind your car, not on top of it. Now the next setting is angle. This controls the angle of the camera in relation to your car. This has a huge range of options, but it's actually one of the most narrow windows of what most good players use. Most of the pros fall somewhere between negative three and negative five. Increasing the angle too much can cause you to lose accuracy in pretty much any aerial task because it's harder to properly judge how high your car is off the ground because it essentially flattens the world by making it feel top down. It's just not how cars are supposed to be driven. It doesn't feel right. I really didn't like playing with an increased angle. Zero out of 10 would not recommend to a friend. Not to mention the extreme angle cuts down what you're able to see of the field, making it harder to read your surroundings. 
And if you put your angle on zero, it's actually not as bad as putting it too high, but it does make it harder to dribble because you can't see enough of the front of your car. It's not as bad as a low height, but it does feel similar. So yeah, this is another one. Just stick within the range. Now we're at stiffness. Essentially, this controls how quickly the camera follows behind your car. At the minimum setting, the camera follows you very slowly, allowing the distance between you and the car to become greater as you go faster. And then when you slow down, it goes back to where you had your camera settings. Now, this will allow you to see more of the field as you accelerate, but it could come at the cost of accuracy if you have to take a shot at full speed. Now, if you set it to max stiffness, the camera follows very quickly, making it seem as if the camera doesn't move at all as you're moving. The only time it'll move is when you go supersonic, and it's ever so slight. But for the most part, your camera's locked right there. Now, this is where you can start to get creative because for the pros, this is all over the place. I've always played with the default sniffness of 0.5. I would recommend finding your other camera settings first and then playing with this, but make sure you have your other camera settings locked first. But keep in mind, stiffness, most closely relates to distance. So the lower the stiffness, the more it's going to increase your distance as you accelerate. So just make sure you have your other camera settings locked. Up next, we have swivel speed. This controls how quickly the camera moves when you manually move it with your analog stick, or whatever the heck you keyboard and mouse users use. Seriously. What do you guys even use? A low swivel speed makes it move glacially slow, but it looks a lot more smooth and it's less jarring. A higher swivel speed makes it move pretty much instantly, but it can be jarring and I find it off-putting myself. But on the bright side, this is all up to your creativity. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable and works best for you in-game. But a lot of high-level players keep it around four or higher. I also keep my swivel speed at four because anything lower than that feels just too slow to be useful in-game. Up next, we have transition speed. This changes how quickly slash smooth your camera transitions from ball cam back to car cam. At its lowest, the camera moves slowly, but is smooth and easy to follow. At its highest, the transition is instant, and I personally can't handle a max transition speed because I lose sense of where my car is. But if you don't have that problem, I say go for it. Which means this is another setting that is also up to your creativity, whichever you can handle. If you can handle how fast it moves at its highest setting, by all means, use it. And there you go, you've mastered camera settings. I automatically grant you 50 points of MMR. If you just need a jumping off point for cam settings, I'm going to give you the cam settings of the pro player Gyro. Also, I'll make sure to leave a link down to his channel in the description of this video if you guys want to drop him a follow or see if his cam settings have changed. Now, I recommend you try these out for a while and adjust it to how you see fit. For example, my distance is 250 because I was particularly bad at striking. Actually, I'm pretty sure it used to be 240, which, if you remember, is at the bottom end of what I consider to be acceptable. And my height is 110, because way back when, when I was trying to get better camera settings, I just used squishies, and now I put so many hours into it that I'm afraid to change them. Which, you should be too. Change your settings carefully or derank at your own risk. Make small changes to these over a long period of time with careful thought. Do not go to one extreme or the other just because your striking sucks. Stay within the recommendations I just gave you. And let me know down below in the comments if you want me to do a video covering keybinds, controller settings, or my favorite training packs. And if you haven't already, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, click the bell, turn on notifications. Seriously, please subscribe to the channel. I'm like so close to 3k subscribers. Also come by the live stream. I stream Rocket League six days a week over on Twitch. Info down below in the description. And I'll see you guys next time.